Hey, Avid Tires, what's your favorite hopper? Today we're sitting here gonna spin up a good one that was invented up in Wyoming out of uh, North Fork Anglers. This is Tim Wade's Ho Candy. It's a cool little attractor hopper um, that'll be, it's a, a bullet fly, bullet head fly with elk hair and some other attractant uh, materials in there that could be a good one to have in your box. So let's go ahead and tie one up. Got our fire hole 718 in the vise here. This is a great hook from fire hole. One of my favorites, not only from fire hole, but definitely all time hook. Uh, it's got a nice elongated limerick bend, a super wide gape with a straight eye and uh, is offered in a huge range of sizes. I think it comes from a size six or a size four, somewhere in there on the big end, all the way down to a 24. So this is a, a great option in a lot of different cases, a lot of different use cases for this hook. We're gonna start our thread that I'm using today. This is some Vivas Tenot in orange. I use a lot of this color on my terrestrials and it matches up nicely with the bug we're tying up today, which will be a mix of yellow and orange, sort of like a stimulator coloration, just in a very different style of tie. So walk our thread on back, create a nice little thread base there. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are gonna cover it all up. And I am gonna add these golden pheasant tippets. These are the small size from Hairline still quite a bit of feather there. So I am gonna trim it back a little bit and thin it out slightly. But for the most part, we're gonna leave it pretty big, just kind of a, an attractant on the back end of this fly. It sort of makes it kind of an elegant pattern with this traditional golden pheasant tippet. So I cleaned up just a little bit there and we'll measure out, I like a, kind of a big stubby tail on this fly. So we'll measure that to be oh, about the length of the hook point there is a good measuring device. And then we can tie that in right on top. And just check ourselves before we secure it down and wrap into it real good. And then we can walk it up and use that as a bit of an underbody, help to create a little bit of bulk, don't want to go too big, but just a little bit underneath there. And then we're going to go ahead and wander on back and we will tie in our body material, which is going to be some ice dubbing. I just have the hot yellow color today. This is definitely something you can play around with and do a whole variety of colorations to this fly, tans and browns and purples, whatever might fit your fancy. But yellow is a confident color for me when it comes to terrestrials. I like yellows, tans, oranges. Something that's gonna pop real nice and get those fish to chase maybe a little bit when they're in the move or in the mood to move around. So pretty simple body here, just a nice stubbed body. We'll work our way on forward and add as we go. And we'll leave ourselves a good bit of room up front to get that bullet head in there, as well as the underwing and the wing, all of those key materials to this Juicy fly. Of course, as a hopper imitation, it's good on its own. If you want to fish a single dry fly in the summer months, late July, early August, and throughout, this is a good one to tie on. And it'll also be a good hopper dropper style fly as well. You'll be able to hang a decent amount of weight in a dropper fly off of the back of this guy. 
So I'm gonna leave myself at least a hook eye in length there. Right off of the, the front of the hook so that we can tie in a few more materials. Starting with some Sparkle Emerger yarn. Any type of Antron will do. I'm using a tan today, just sort of blends nicely with this color combination that I'm doing. So I like to take one hank of this Sparkle Emerger yarn. It would be one uh, bundle off of the spool as well. It's about the same amount of material that you're working with when you have the spool. And then I'll fold it over and double it up to give a little bit of a dense underwing there. And then we're gonna add to that. I'm just gonna smooth things out here as I go. Have a nice easy transition there. Add some flash. You could do crystal flash today. I just have the midge flash in pearl. I'm gonna grab a fair amount of that, probably eight strands or so, and I'm gonna double this over as well. So we'll tie it in basically on one side on top, but kind of towards me, and then fold it back over and pull it more towards the other side to really fill out underneath there. Give you an idea, it helps to just kind of create a nice flat wing on top and gives that flash, which is always a good aspect in an attractor dry. And then just smooth this out a little bit and prepare ourselves for the wing, the primary wing here, which is gonna be some elk hair. You can do deer hair if you prefer. I tend to do a lot of bleached, but a natural color can fish really well also. So we'll just take a good size bundle of this. It's about a pencil's width typically. And then we'll thin it down a little bit also by cleaning it out. So got all the under fur in there we wanna get rid of. Make it nice and clean, clear out some of the smaller ones as well, some of the short hairs. With any natural material, you're gonna end up with some waste. So don't be afraid to really clean that out. You'll end up with a much better looking fly the cleaner you get this hair to be. Once we got it nice and clean, we're gonna stack it, get all of our tips aligned. Just like so, nicely aligned tips there. And we'll grab those out, now we're gonna measure. So for this fly, it can be a little tricky to get the length right, but really what I like to do is utilize that tail, and that'll be my overall length, and you'll see as we go to tie it why we need so much extra. So we'll trim that out, full length there, and then we're gonna transfer this in our hands and reverse face it so that we have the bundle tied in reverse. So we got our tips facing outwards on the front end. And then we're gonna tie in the butt sections here. So I like to sort of pinch it with my left hand and we're gonna do a couple of loose wraps and then we'll do another one and we're gonna bite into it and spin this hair around the shank. So this is a bit of a tricky piece. The better you get it to spin, the cleaner your bullet head, head will look when you're done. Um, you can tie in a couple of bundles and do it that way. I find just going for it and, and kind of practicing that spin technique. You'll use it on a lot of different patterns, streamers and, and other things, uh, and it just gives it a nice clean feel to it overall. So. Once we have it tied in, we wanna make sure that we're pretty close up to the front of that hook eye there, so that when we push all of our hair rearward, it'll be right behind the hook eye. We don't want to leave ourselves a gap there. Um, but I am gonna thin out a little bit of the butt ends here. So we'll clean this up slightly. 
Having a rotary vise makes a big difference when you're doing this type of work. And just as I go around, I like to push down the other materials that I'm not wanting to cut out of the way. And then you can sort of sneak under and not worry about cutting anything out that you don't want to. So thin that out a bit. Now we're going to push all of the hair rearward. So if you have a little um, half hitch tool, that helps a lot. Um, you can use various different things, hair packers and things like that. I don't have one with me today, so I'm just going to use my fingers and sort of maneuver all that material, material back best I can. And push it off of the eye there. And as much in a linear fashion as you can. So you want the hair that's on top to go straight over the top. The hair that's coming off on the side goes straight back to the side and same underneath so that you get those nice clean lines in your bullet head. So we'll pull all of this back, holding it in place, and then we're gonna sneak our thread right up and around it, right by that collar. Before I do so, let's make that a little bit easier on myself. We're gonna sneak underneath and walk our thread back to where we're gonna bring it forward. Something I should have done before I started manipulating all that hair back. Just get that thread where you want it and then you can push back and come straight up on it. So hold that all in place and then come up and over and do a couple of quick locking wraps on that bullet head and kind of see where you're at. So right now we're fully engulfed throughout. So underneath, we'll come back in and trim that out a little bit. But before that, we're gonna add some legs. Make sure that's not gonna move on us. Uh, and the legs on this are some round rubber legs. Tend to almost always use these on my terrestrial dries. It's a nice gauged round rubber leg and the barred versions from Hairline really give a nice look to things. So with the legs, we're gonna take it and I'm gonna measure out the back, how long I want them to be out the back and typically right around the same length of that tail is a good starting point. Definitely err on the long side if you're gonna trim them back because once you get them tied in, you can't go longer, but you can trim them down. And then something I've seen recently that I haven't really ever done before, which I think is a cool trick, I think it's Sun Tao on Instagram. I started seeing him do this quite often. Instead of cutting it and tying in a second piece, just bring that same piece around and you can tie it in all at once, but um, sort of pulling that around so that you have a kind of loop out front. It's gonna help you maximize your material. And once you have it tied in and, and sort of secured, you can just come to that front end and clip your loop and then you got two sets of legs there. So sort of a neat trick, something that I've picked up more recently. And we're just gonna whip finish right over top of everything here, giving that nice orange collar, pulling tight on it and clipping out the thread. And then we can trim down our legs. What I like to do with our legs is pull them all forward. If you want them to be the same length overall, you can go straight up. But I like my back legs to be a little bit longer than my front legs. And so I'll pull them forward a little bit clip them all together and that tends to leave them a little bit longer on the back end. And of course you can trim them and play with them. Get them to be how you like them. And then the final thing we're gonna do very carefully here is trim out underneath. So we want that abdomen to show. So we're gonna trim out all of the elk or deer hair right behind the collar, very carefully. It's easy to come in here and trip your thread, your legs. It's 
So we want to get as close as we can to the collar without messing anything up. Using the Dr. Slick hair scissors, which are great because they're razor scissors, but they have a nice long blade. So you got a lot of scissor to work with. The razor micro tip scissors would be perfect for this. Left them at home today, of course. But then just sort of manipulate it and figure out, okay, well, how high do I want to go? You want to still have a nice wing up top but you do want to trim out underneath and sort of on the sides here to clean up that underbody a bit. Just like you would on any, any bullet head. You're gonna trim it up in a similar fashion. But that's it, there's our bug. Great little dry fly. Tied it, uh, today we tied it a little bit smaller, size 12, but you can go to 10 and 8 on this, no problem, and still have really good success with it. Uh, just a cool little attractor dry fly. Works as a hopper, as, as some stone flies, different color combinations, um, and a good one to fish. It's going to be pretty buoyant with all of that elk hair on there. Uh, it'll cure nicely with the ice stub. It won't saturate too quickly, um, so it'll hold some gink and whatnot pretty well. Just a very fishable little dry fly. So that's Wade's Ho Candy.